Johnny Dollar. Jack Price. Well, how come, Jackson? Uh, what do you mean? Things getting slow down there in Corpus Christi? I haven't heard from you in nearly a month. Well, that makes you mad? Sure it does, because you're one of the few insurance agents in this country who's sucker enough to file a nice extra fee on top of my expense account whenever I handle a case for you. Oh, I am, huh? Sure, and I love you dearly for it. Not this time, Johnny. Oh? <laughs> Why not? Well, brother, you don't need any extra fees. And uh, speaking of... Oh, brother, now, Jackson, you touched me to the quick. Speaking of brother, Johnny... Yes? Doug Johnstone. Doug Johnson. Kid brother, the man who writes up those cases you handle for CBS Radio. Oh, sure. What about him? Well, it seems he has a little problem. Of course, if you won't come down here unless you can pick up some ridiculous extra fee, uh, even though Doug has suffered considerable loss already. Jackson, what's it all about? Just don't worry about it, Johnny. We'll somehow... Jackson? Somehow... I'll get hold of somebody who really cares about the misfortunes of his old friends. <laughs> I'll find somebody. You do, and I'll break your neck. Then my faith in human nature is restored. What's the problem? I'll be waiting for you at the airport. Jackson! Uh, now, according to this uh, timetable on my desk, you can pull in here about noon. Hey, I asked a question. See you later, Johnny. Look, I said what? Hello. Hello. Oh, okay, Stinky, I'll be there. <laughs> Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-Western Life Insurance Company Corpus Christi office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Skidmore matter. Expense count item one, ten dollars and twelve cents, plane fare to New York. Item two, one hundred and fourteen oh two for the rest of the trip. As promised, Jack Price was waiting at the Corpus Christi Municipal Airport. He picked up my luggage, led the way out to a car at the curb, threw the stuff into the back, and... That's one of those rental jobs, Johnny. No? How come? Because you're going over to the little town of Skidmore. Uh, hop in. That's where uh, Doug Johnstone is? What's happened to him? To Doug? Nothing. Well, you told me over the phone... Well, he's that... happily running that home for old folks, the heart, doing a bang-up job of it. He said to give you his regards. He'll see you later. But uh, as long as this problem's really ours, uh, the insurance company... Now, 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 wait one minute. You said over the phone... I said as little as possible uh, to be sure you'd hike on down here. Jackson, you're a dog. Sure I am. But anyhow, here's what goes. Yeah. A dog has been pretty well in the stock market since he came here to Corpus. And uh, some other investments. Didn't he go for some oil properties, too, somewhere in these parts? Yeah, and a lot of other things, uh, including a smart buy of heavy machinery and parts for it. Mostly tractors, bulldozers, graders, that kind of equipment. Mm -hmm. you know, stuff that's used around the oil fields uh, and for road building. Oh, good for him. It was. What? Until he began losing some of it. Losing it? Well, that is... I heard of a man losing a bass drum once, but isn't losing a bulldozer a little ridiculous? Oh, you know what I mean. Somebody's been stealing a lot of those big parts from out of the big, uh, well, warehouse, I guess you'd call it, that he rents over by the little town of Skidmore. And because of the insurance, every piece of equipment gets taken, we have to pay for it. Hmm. Uh, where is Skidmore? North and west of here, about 60 miles. But there's a map with their route marked out for you there on the seat. So if you want to hire yourself over to Skidmore... Jackson? Yeah? Well, tell me, hasn't Doug some kind of a guard or a watchman, uh, you know, looking over the stuff? He has now. What about the police? Have you any idea how big a place Skidmore is? Or I should say, isn't? No. Just follow the route on this map, and you can't miss it. Okay. And the old watchman will be glad to help, I'm sure. What's his name, by the way? Uh, Joe Hernandez. All right, Jackson. I'll be in touch. I drove the freeway to Gregory, then west on 181. Jack was right. The actual town of Skidmore wasn't much more than a crossroads. 
south of it, on the road to Tynan, I found the sprawling warehouse that he mentioned. As I pulled up in front of it, the door of a, a nearby tool shed opened quickly, and out came a man about, oh, maybe four feet ten, I'd say, and perhaps a hundred pounds, ringing wet. His deeply wrinkled face as brown as a proverbial berry. Atop it was an oversized, beat-up old sombrero. Then as I shouted toward him, from somewhere under his ragged shirt, he pulled out the biggest old-fashioned six-gun that I had seen in years. You do not come any closer, senor. Uh, I guess not, if uh, if you're going to wave uh, that thing in my face. Who are you? What do you want? I'm looking for a man by the name of Joe Hernandez. Huh? My name is Dollar. Juanito Dollar? The famous of what you call the investigate? You are Senor Dollar? That's right, Johnny Dollar. Now, uh, would you mind putting down that... Ah, uh... Juanito, Juanito, Senor Price from the insurance, he say you would come. Permit me to introduce myself. I am a Jose Elguero de Santiago, my first and Julio Hernandez. That is over, Senor. Uh, would, uh... <laughs> Would you like to start that over again? Jose Elguero de Santiago McPherson, Julio Hernandez. Oh, uh, did I hear a, uh, a McPherson thrown in there somewhere along the line? See? Si? He's the most very honorable name of my most very honorable, what you call, answer to. Oh, I'm sure he was. Oh, see, si, but there was no need for you to come here, senor. No? With me, Jose Elguero de Santiago McPherson, Julio Hernandez on the job. <laughs> the senor Johnson will lose no more of his fine equipment. This I personally, I guarantee. Oh, you do? 24 hours a day. I'm here now, and with this, my 45 pistola, nobody would dare to challenge me, not me, Jose Elguero. Yes, 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 Julio Julio Hernandez, yes, well, um... So you may leave now, senor, with the most very peace of mind. I bid you adios. Now, uh, just wait a minute, uh, Jose. Si? Uh, Do you mean to say that since you've come on the job, there has been no more stuff taken out of this place? Only the one, what you call, skip loaded. The skip loader? That is all. Well, that's all. Huh? Maybe ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth. Huh? No wonder Jack Price seems to think you need some help. Well, senor, I have it now. What kind of help? Oh, you see? The pistola. Look. Holy... What's the matter with you? You see what you've done with that cannon? You knocked the side window out of my car. I am sorry, senor, but you see what I mean. Now I have this. Look, just uh, tuck that back into your shirt, huh? I see, of course. But everything is safe now. You may go now, there is nothing to worry about. Nothing. You know something, Jose? I think that's a matter of opinion. Can you provide skilled assistance on a farm cooperative, teach reading and writing to people who want to learn, assist in industry management, or nurse the sick? These are a few of the many jobs open to members of the Peace Corps. Dozens more countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America are asking for help from the Peace Corps. To find out if you can qualify for this exciting work, write to Peace Corps, Washington 25, D.C. Before showing me through the huge, windowless warehouse, Jose introduced me to his wife, Carmela, who was living there with him in this kind of tool shed. And it was she who'd insisted that he buy the gun after the last robbery. Then he took me in for a look at the heavy equipment parts Doug Johnstone was storing there until it could be sold. Can't you wait, senor? When I turn on my life. Buena. You see? Wow. I don't blame Doug for wanting this stuff protected. See? And that is why you select me, Jose Elguero de Santiago. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Sure. Hmm. Not only tractors, graders, bulldozers, power shovels, skip loaders. Enough spare parts here to sink a ship. See? And I, Jose Elguero de Santiago. A couple of hundred thousand dollars worth. And like I say, that is the reason Senor Johnson has selected me, Jose Algarve de Santiago. Yes, yeah, okay. Part. All right, Jose. Now, uh, tell me, uh, when did you say the last robbery was? The night before last, right after the day of the wedding, Senor. What wedding? 
Fernando Inácio Cofarreo Ortiz. My, uh, my third second, what do you call it? Cousin. Cousin? And the party I make here, Nivina. Oh, Nivina. Ah, Senor Dollar, Ronnie, that you should have been here. Ah, so that's it. Huh? By the time you and your wife got to bed that night, Jose, you were boiled to the ears. Senor? How else could you have slept through somebody moving this kind of stuff out here? Look, Jose, um, I don't know who picked you for this job or why. This cousin I tell you about, Fran Ortiz, he, he, he gave me what you call the recommend to the Senor Johnson. No, he didn't. Because he knows all about these things, his equipment. This uh, 32nd cousin of yours? See? Si? What's he do for a living? He's operating this uh, kind of machine. What? And he sometimes he uh, fixes it up in his shop in the town of Tres Rios. What you call uh, Tres Rivas. You mean that he operates and repairs this kind of stuff in his own shop? She is a very smart hombre. My 32nd cousin. I'll bet he is. No wonder he recommended you for the job. Senor? So why Doug Johnstone would fall for anything so obvious... Okay, Jose. See? Si? I'm going back to Corpus Christi to see Mr. Johnstone at the hearth. When? And you said to him that I, Jose, or Jose, Jose huh? you and your wife had better pack up to leave. To leave? Senor? Because after I talk with him, I suspect there'll be some changes made around here. Juanito, you mean... I'm sorry, you... Jose. I'll see you later. Sorry that I couldn't meet you at the airport, Johnny, but this really has me tied down here. I know, Doug. It's perfectly all right. What isn't all right, though, is the guard you have at that building over at Skidmore. I know. Tell me, didn't you smell a rat when this 32nd cousin recommended him, if there is such a thing? Cousin? Yes, this Ortiz. Well, I didn't know they were related, even that distantly. The point is, Johnny, that I just found out that Ortiz owns a piece of a repair business for road building machines and the like. Well, sure he does. All I'd known about him before was... Well, he did some odd jobs around here, mostly earth-moving. Now, of course... Well, of course, all he has to do is get old Jose and his wife drunk, then help himself to your warehouse full of parts. It certainly looks that way. And this Ortiz is a sort of sharp sort of character. Have you called in the police? No, because meantime, Jack Price promised to get you down here, and, well, I figured you'd handle it. Yeah, well, I'll try. Uh, the first thing, of course, will be to replace old Jose... Do you think he's wise to this caper? No. He's such a sweet old man. No, I don't think he's wise, but that's beside the point. Yeah, I know. The main thing now is to get somebody smart out there before this Ortiz can hit you again. Well, I'm sure he won't tonight. Why? Because he's coming in here to see me. Oh, what about? I don't know. Probably looking for some more odd jobs. I told him I don't need him again, but he's coming anyway. Mm. Uh, do you mind if I'm among those present? Oh, it might be a good idea. You can look him over. He's due at 8.30. Good. I'll be here. Purely on a hunch, I drove on over to Skidmore again just to make sure that old Jose was on his toes and would stay that way. Have no fear, senor, as long as I, Jose, will get to Santiago McPherson. Then I drove on back to town, checked in at the Robert Driscoll, unpacked my bags, changed and ran up item 3, 580, for one big delicious dinner. By then, it was time to meet Doug, and more important, Fernando Ortiz. Sharp character is right. In spite of his working clothes, and uh, regardless of how good a job he might have done for Doug and the rest home, I just didn't like him. No, I'm sorry, Ortiz. There just isn't a thing we need you for at the moment. But, Mr. Johnstone, not uh, a single thing. Now, if you don't mind, but if something does come up that I can do for you, will you call me? Sure, sure. As I told you nearly an hour ago when you first got here. But now my uh, my wife is waiting for Mr. Dollar and... Oh, oh of course. Uh, I am sorry to hold you up this way. Uh, but just one more thing. Ortiz. If uh, you decide to level off the recreation area... No other time, Ortiz. Yes, very well, whatever you say. Uh, Mr. Dollar, it has been nice to meet you. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good night. Uh, good night. Well, Johnny, what do you think? I don't know, this this visit tonight. The way he kept thinking of just one more thing to discuss. Mm. Almost as though he was stalling. I got that feeling, too. Yeah, but why? 
In the first place, Doug, he didn't seem a bit surprised to see me here. I know. He arrived at 8.30 on the nose. It is now 9.02. What are you thinking of? His real reason for coming here, for the stalling around. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, Jackson. Sure he is. Uh, for you. Oh, thanks. Johnny Dollar. Oh, Johnny. Jack Price. Thank goodness I finally ran you down. Oh, yes, Jack. Uh, I'll meet you there right away. We're going over to Skidmore at the warehouse. Why? What's happened? That poor old man, Jose. Yes? Somebody just murdered him. Or it is. I'll be right over, Johnny. Bye. Wait a minute, Jackson. Yeah? Just murdered, did you say? When? What time? Well, according to his wife, it was 8.25, 8.30. That's too late. Well, what? That's when he was here with us. Well, Jose? No, Ortiz. Ortiz? What do you mean? I mean that he couldn't have. Johnny. Doggone it, I think he did. Will you make some sense? Come on over, Jackson. We'll be waiting for you. tune a hundred times and never hear the words and then boom you know what the tune's saying it's like that with newport filter cigarettes that special combination of good rich tobacco flavor the right amount of menthol and just a hint of mint makes a difference a man can notice because it freshens up his taste no wonder newport's more refreshing to begin with more refreshing all the way it's so refreshing while you're smoking newport Filter cigarettes, new part, filter cigarettes, new part. The warehouse over near Skidmore was crawling with state police. Fortunately, Sergeant Billy Roscoe, an old friend of mine, was in charge. John Stone, Mr. Price, see here? Mm -hmm. Whoever plugged him with that old gun of his got him real close up. Because if he used Jose's clothing to muffle the sound. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Sure. Tell me, uh, were there any prints on the gun? All wiped off. Mm -hmm. Jose's wife, Carmela, did she see anybody around? Only oh, you, and then later some uh, cousin Fernando. Uh, Fernando. Ortiz. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Where is she, Roscoe? Sleep? Asleep. Sure, she was in bad shape. The doc gave her a sedative. Oh. One of my boys who understands Mexican got the whole story from her. Oh? Yeah, this, uh, this Ortiz talked with the old man a while and tried to give him a couple of jugs of wine. But Jose wouldn't have it. Chase him away. What time was that, do you know? Ooh, around five o'clock, she said, just before supper. Oh, but now about this Ortiz. Well, tell me just what happened, Russell. Well, when they had supper, then the old man said he was going to the house. He was a watchman. Yes, I know. And after a while, she got a phone call from Ortiz. At what time was that? Exactly 8.25. You're sure of that time? Oh, only because he asked her the time. And that clock of hers in the shack is right. Mm. You happen to know what he said to her? He said to get Jose to the phone. She told him Jose was out around the warehouse, but she'd come out and get him. 8.25. Yeah, so she came on over here to the big sliding door. The one Mr. Price is looking at. Jose always came in by it. Yeah. And she started pushing it open. Bang, she heard the shot. Well, then, Johnny. Yes, Doug? It couldn't have been Ortiz. Well, why, Mr. Johnstone? Well, because he met us at my office in Corpus at exactly 8.30. He couldn't possibly have been over here only five minutes before. Yeah. Looks as though we were wrong about him. Well, you suspected Ortiz of this, Johnny? Or else he's a lot smarter than we think. Anyway, what happened then, Roscoe? Well, she came in and found the body and put in the call to us. No sign of anyone else in here, hmm? Well, of course, a man could have hidden away in all this junk. Yeah. Listen, if he was heisting these machine parts, if he knew that Jose had been talking to me, that I might get on his trail... Oh, well, sure, he'd have reason to kill off Jose. Yeah, but he couldn't, Sergeant, because he was in Corpus at 8.30 with us. 
Now, where was he when Jose was killed? Like I said, on the telephone. Must have been in Corpus waiting for Jose to get on this end. Was he still on the phone when she got back to call you fellows? Well, now, I don't know. No, I'm betting he wasn't. If he talked to Jose after I was here, he knew I told Jose to keep an eye on this place tonight. To be here inside this warehouse. Okay. Then why did he make that call? I'm sure that I don't know. So that she would come out here and find the body? At about the time he'd be walking into Doug's office? No, no, no. Wait, Johnny. You sound as though he's the only possible killer. I think he is. Suppose he'd killed him earlier. Oh, Carmella heard the shot. A great big bang as she touched the sliding door. Even so, I... Wait a minute. You can't lick it, John. Did you say a great big bang? Yeah, like it was just inside of the door. But look, his body's over here. And the way that gun was shoved into his clothing, it should have been a... Well, it should only have been kind of a, a muffled sort of a thug. Well, now, say you're right. And that shot must have been here at the door, Johnny. What's that, Jackson? Look, this funny mark on the door, kind of burn. Yes. And the smell, you smell it? Like iodine. Yes. Yes, you're right. What the... What is it, Johnny? The answer, Doug. I'm sure of it. The answer to what? How Ortiz killed him. Sometime after I left, as soon as Jose came out here to this warehouse, Ortiz killed him and then went to keep the date with you, Doug. Yeah, with the shot at 8.30. Sounded like a shot. It would to an untrained ear... And she set it off when she pushed against this door about the same time that he walked into your office, Doug, for an alibi. I don't get it, Johnny. A crazy kid caper. High school chemistry class. What? Do you remember, Doug? Like, like making stink bombs, carbon disulfide, but this one was the best one of all. Wait, no. Nitrogen iodide. You remember you made a kind of a soup real carefully out of iodine crystals and yeah, ammonium of something? Of course I remember. Sure, then we'd, we'd filter it then, you know, and get, get, a, get a sort of a paste out of it and spread it around. Sure, sure, on the door hinges, on the, on the seat hinges, in the assembly hall, under a book on somebody's desk, and then we'd let it dry. And when it was disturbed, even the least little bit, the stuff went off with a bang. <laughs> yeah, and the girls all squealed, and we boys had a ball. But in this case, Ortiz's alibi. If, that is. Uh, Roscoe, you want to scrape off some of that and have a lab man see if it's the residue of nitrogen iodine? Well, I sure do. That's really all there is to the case. It was nitrogen iodide, all right. And a rundown on Fernando Ortiz brought out the fact that he'd been quite a prankster in his high school days. But you know what gave me a big surprise? The way that he made a full confession after I told him exactly how he'd set up his alibi. Expense account total... 27628. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, one of the most beautiful spots on Earth that really shouldn't be the site for a murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber, sound patterns by Joseph Cabibbo. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Featured in our cast were Santos Ortega as Jose Hernandez, Maurice Tarplin as Jack Price, Richard Keith as Doug Johnstone, Ralph Camargo as Ortiz, and also heard were Bill Lipton and Sam Rapkin. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Gaylord Avery.